Hello, my name is John Bindernagel. I'm a wildlife biologist and I've been studying the Sasquatch or Bigfoot for about 40 years. And uh, today I'd just like to share some of uh, my results with you in uh, a three se segment presentation, about 15 minutes each. This first segment is what the Sasquatch looks like, um, anatomical features in particular. Um, I, I like to start with a question, what is it that people see that makes them think they've seen a Sasquatch and not a bear on its hind legs or a human in a fur suit? Well, what they see and sometimes describe for us and sometimes draw for us is a huge, hair-covered, upright, human-shaped mammal. <clears throat> and this, this, of course, is very problematic because it is so human-like in its general appearance. But we should be aware that there are some anatomical details which are distinctly unhuman-like. And we can see from this drawing from, from Oregon from the 1970s, um, we do see the broad shoulders, but note also the long arms and that short, thick neck, and in this case, a tendency towards a, a somewhat pointed head. Now this raises a problem right at the outset. If, if, if you're like me, if you'd seen that, you'd come home, you, you'd look at, look, uh, go through field guide to the mammals, looking for a mammal that looks like this. And the closest image we'll find is a bear on its hind legs, which, which could be depicted this way, uh, both the front and side view. And of course, a bear on its hind legs has tapered shoulders, not these broad hominoid ape-like or human-like shoulders. And of course, from the side, the bear has a very prominent snout. Now, what's missing from our f field guides still today is this image here of a Sasquatch, front view, side view, and which really needs to be put on a facing page with an upright bear <clears throat> so that we can see that, aha, yes, the Sasquatch has a flat face, not the prominent snout of the bear. The Sasquatch has broad shoulders, which, although it makes it appear much more human-like, certainly makes it much less bear-like. Now let's look at a few more eyewitness drawings because I feel they're quite instructive. Here's one from New Mexico, 2002, relatively recent. Uh, Sasquatch walking bipedally, and this of course is, it's both a characteristic of the Sasquatch and a problem in that it walks bipedally, somewhat like a human, a different gait, but walk, walks bipedally. This one shows the, the long arms, short thick neck, and, and quite a pointed head. Another one from uh, Mineral Lake in Washington, 1991, shows up the very, the, I think we're pretty much looking at adult males here in these, in these first images. Very broad shoulders, short thick neck, a very pointed head in this one. And then we'll move on to actually two more adult males. This one I quite like, it's from the Ottawa Valley of Ontario. Uh, short, thick neck. He's made a slight attempt to show facial features here. and He, he described the uh, nostrils as, as simply outward facing nostrils, two black holes in the face basically. Here's a very muscular appearing Sasquatch, according to the eyewitness drawing, from Ohio, 1980, which is kind of interesting because we do have these reports of beyond human strength and speed and this, this muscularity probably ties in with that. Now, not so much now, but a few years ago, if one mentioned Sasquatch, say from Ontario, or Canada, or from Ohio, eyebrows would be raised even more than usual because the Sasquatch used to be considered a mammal, if it existed, of the Pacific Northwest, the western states of um, the U.S. And, and Canada. So l let's look at this map, which shows the distribution of reports, although it's getting a bit old now, 2002 is when I made that map, but as we can see, most, the states and provinces with the most sightings are indeed in Western North America. British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, California, especially Northern California. And then the provinces and states just interior to these, and that would be Alberta, Idaho, and Montana. But there is this area of numerous reports, Ohio, Pennsylvania, even Maryland in, in the American Midwest and East. And if we accept the, 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 the swamp, swamp monkey or skunk ape of Florida as a Sasquatch, then we have to add Florida as well. Now, let's look at a couple more drawings because not all Sasquatches appear to be these great hulking wide-shouldered males. Some have been described as females 
either on the basis of visible breasts, such as this one, or because it was carrying an infant, or appeared to be carrying an infant, such as this one. And of course, the, the controversial Patterson-Gimlin film, in good copies of that film, you can see that that appears to be a female with visible breasts. Yet other Sasquatches appear to be sub-adults or young adults. And these, of course, are, well, I'm say of course, and these are even more human-like th 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 than the mature adults. They're more slender, more gangly in some places, not as broad-shouldered. Here's one from the only a couple hours from where I live here on Vancouver Island, observed by a, a deer hunter, two deer hunters, an older man who was my age, and a younger uh, fellow who was only 16 at the time. <clears throat> And there's a bit of a story behind this one because these two hunters are dragging a deer down a mountain and ahead they see this thing leaning against a tree and first they think it's Bob, the, the young uh, hunter's father. And they're thinking, what, what's Bob doing out here in torn rain gear or torn Stanfield underwear, whatever he's wearing? He's got better rain gear than that. And where's his rifle? It's November. Nobody's out here without a rifle um, these, in, at this time of year. Anyway, they decided they, they had to get that deer off the mountain, so they turned around, got the deer. By the time they came back to this place, uh, it was gone. But that evening, the young fellow made this drawing, and they basically concluded, gee, they, they must have seen a Sasquatch that day. So that's kind of interesting. Um, there's another uh, interesting sub-adult drawing, also from very near where I live, here uh, on Vancouver Island. <clears throat> And this is an interesting one because the girl who saw a teenage girl, there were two teenage girls on a Saturday morning on the beach uh, digging for something in, in, the, in, in the intertidal zone, and they heard a slapping on the water around the point. And they worked their way around and were confronted with this image, this being uh, uh, standing there with a stick in one hand and some ducks in the other. And just as they were turning to, to run, turn around and run, it turned and ran first, and they saw it run like a deer. And when, when the woman did the drawing for me, which I was very grateful for, I, I had to say, gee, gee whiz, that's, that looks very human-like. She said, well, it may look human-like in the drawing, but in no way was it a human. It was about seven feet tall, very muscular, covered with long, silky, reddish hair, ran like a deer. Uh, one more of these uh, would appear to be sub adults or young adults. This one again from Ohio, and this is actually a painting, uh, Ohio, 1982, a Sasquatch standing on a bridge. Uh, usual characteristics, the, the, the short neck, the tendency towards the pointed head, in this case sloping uh, from receding forehead, and uh, large hands as well as large feet. <laughs> now, we even have a pretty good idea of some, some of the uh, details of the Sasquatch face. We have a couple of uh, eyewitness drawings on for our use from Ohio. This one from near Sharon, Ohio. Interesting features because some of the characteristics are, are somewhat ape-like, and I'm referring now to the, to the thin lips, the wide mouth, the outward fa uh, forward-facing nostrils, and the very wide upper lip. And of course, this one also shows that very characteristic uh, short thick neck. A second one also from Ohio, uh, 1990, again similar, similar features, outward facing nostrils, thin lips, wide mouth, uh, tendence, very strong tendency towards a pointed head on that one and although it doesn't show up real well, a rounded chin, not, not the sharp pointed head of the human but the rounded chin of the some of the great apes. And one last one from Vancouver Island, just a sketch in this case, uh, looking at us, showing those forward-facing nostrils again. Now, just a last drawing, because every once in a while, well, not uh, a lot of these are, are, are quite good drawing, but sometimes we get uh, a Sasquatch observed by an exceptionally talented uh, artist, and that's what happened uh, on Mount Elphinstone in British Columbia in 2009 when uh, a young man observed this Sasquatch in an area where he was, uh, I believe he was tree planting. And it, it's a nice drawing. It shows that 
athletic ability and flexibility of the Sasquatch, which is so often described. Again, it's this kind of beyond human ability to climb trees, to run up a mountain quickly, or to squat down and disappear very quickly. And I think that's kind of captured in his drawing, which also seems to show that, that pointed head. So I'm going to break off there. That's uh, just kind of a review of what we what we think the Sasquatch looks like uh, based on, you know, what people have told us and, and showed us. And uh, then I'm going to move on into another form of evidence, and that, of course, is the, the tracks. Thank you.